Hi, Loan Register here. Today we're going to talk about the microcode uh, instructions and the microcode counter. Right now what we know is we know that we have two instructions, two instructions that we have to um, load for each instruction and that, tip, that handles the program counter and it handles loading the instruction into the instruction register. In my case I have six total microcodes so that's four microcodes to execute actual code for um, the CPU. And we also know via Ben Eater's videos that not all instructions consume all of the microcodes. So the remaining microcodes typically are wasted. They're just non-operation type counts, which technically, since this computer is pretty slow, it doesn't really matter. But from a theory perspective, how can we optimize the computer? And the way we can do that is we can utilize the reset uh, circuit on our counter to reset it immediately once we detect a situation where no microcodes are being executed. Now in my case, I have 15 control lines and I need to take and logically map those such that they provide a signal. So if we have the um, microcode counter um, set, we can reset it on a high value. Now, the problem here is, is that we have a situation where if there are no microcodes running, those are all low values. So we're going to have to do some kind of uh, inverting or something at some point. Um, so the first thing we need to do is we need to figure out how to combine all of the control signals so that we can arrive at one control signal that controls the reset. The way that I'm going to do that based on the uh, 74LS uh, kit that I purchased. Um, and I'm not sponsored uh, by this company, but it's a you know easy way to get all the chips, almost all the chips you need, is the 74LS series kit from uh, Jameco, Jamico. Um, and uh, that'll get you on your way to using chips. So in this kit, there are the 74LS O2s. They are uh, NOR um, logic gates. And I'm using two of them. Um, there are four of the NOR gates in there, meaning I can run eight inputs into each chip, which handles, with two chips, handles 16 inputs. I only need um, 15 of them. So what I'm doing is in, I'm running in two signals into each NOR gate. And the way a NOR gate works is it, it will output a one if both of those channels are zero or off, not sending a signal. I pulled those from the uh, blue LED area on the um, uh, breadboard computer, and I'll zoom out in a minute to show you that. So in this case, I know that if it's zero, I'm going to get ones. So in the case of all microcodes not being executed, I will have ones across all of my NOR gates. And in this case, there's going to be eight NOR gates running across. I just didn't write it out. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull it into an octal NAND because with the 16 NOR gates, I have eight outputs and it happens in the kit. I have an octal NAND chip, the 74 LS 30. In this case, um, I would have liked to have had an octal and not a NAND, but I have this. So what I'm going to do is all of these inputs, eight of them come into the octal NAND and a NAND means that if, um, let's go back to our basic logic. If we have a AND gate, that means that however many inputs we have, they all have to be high in order for the output to be high. In a NAND gate, all of the inputs will have to be high in order for the output to be low. Otherwise, the output is high. Now, that's not the result that we want. We want if, if in this case, if all of our inputs are zero, the NOR gates will output a one, which will then go to the NAND gate. That will all be one in the case of a reset being uh, wanting to be run, which will then output a zero. Now, what we do is we just run that to an inverter, right? Not quite. The problem with the this that I ran into is that if you don't take and buffer it in some way, and you'll recognize a chip here in just a second, the information is changing so quickly that you will, as the microcodes control lines change, you can run into a situation where everything is off for just a microsecond. And that's all that's needed to actually engage the reset. So you'll get a situation where you'll just be continually resetting and you'll need an oscilloscope to actually see what's going on, which is what I had to do. So what I did is I inserted in a positive edge D flip-flop 74 LS 74. 
I ran the input um, into the flip-flop, tied it to the clock, and I pulled out because the flip-flop actually takes out your Q value or your inverted Q value. I can choose either one. In this case, since it's coming out here as a zero and I want it to be high to engage the reset, I pulled it from Q inverted, which then gets me my reset signal. So mission accomplished with a lot of wire bending and uh, three, uh, four chips, two NORs, one NAND, one flip-flop. I now have a signal coming out that can reset my microcode and um, improve the efficiency of my computer. All right, so here we have the breadboard computer. And you can see that I've got it on manual right now. I don't have the clock engaged. I can press this to go through the cycles. In this case, what we have here is we have some microcodes on the microcode uh, register here indicating that we're actively doing something and something is happening with our instruction set. So we don't want to reset this. We want it to count. And indeed, if I go ahead and clock, okay, you will see that I double debounced. Um, you'll see that the microcode instruction register is counting and there are still values over here. Now right now there's garbage in this uh, here so I don't know what we're gonna come up with but let's go ahead and go to the next instruction and the next instruction and the next instruction. Now we have it clear. Now notice that I don't have the reset connected here and it's going to go through. In this case there's one more over here that you wouldn't have seen and since the reset engaged, it immediately drew it back. Let's see if we can go through another cycle here and see if we can get one that's a short uh, microcode. And we go there, we go there, there. Okay, it looks like there. You can see that we had a short reset there. Let's run through one more time. One, there. And you can see it zeroed and reset. Now the reset happens almost immediately. So let's watch that again and see if we can catch it. Here's a reset right here. All of our control lines are empty and it should jump back to zero when I let go. Boom, and it does. There's your reset. So um, it looks like I have a little debounce issue here or something going on with the um, clock cycle because you noticed a couple of times it actually jumped to two. Um, not sure what <coughs> what's happening there, but you can see here we do have a reset cycle going which causes our microcode to be a little bit more efficient.